Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It is Merry Christmas. I'm so glad to see each and every one of you here. It's a joy to be gathered on this beautiful night in here. Out there, it, it's whatever it is. But here, it is warm and wonderful. Thank you. I invite you to bow your heads and let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God, with joy and thanksgiving, we gather as your people. We have come here to hear again of the timeless story of Christ's birth. In the excitement of this night, night, quiet our hearts that we might know the peace and fil fullness of this holy time. Shine a light in the darkness of our world and in the stillness of our hearts as we proclaim once more glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those God favors. This we pray in the name of the child of Bethlehem. Amen. Please stand and join in our opening hymn. I tell you the number doesn't matter. You've got the words in front of you. quietly. I hope. <laughs> Actually, I'll be asking. Just Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that 
as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may invite into our lives your son who you sent to us this night. Amen. <coughs> What's up? Oh, we're going to... Oh, I, 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 seriously. He's had a lot of practice blowing out Advent wreath candles. He gets very excited. Let's stand for the reading of the gospel, please. <laughs> Small children. The gospel lesson is found in Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. And in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. At this, this was the first census that took place while Quinarius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to Judah, to Bethlehem, the town of David. Because he belonged to the house and line of David, he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son and wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Now our turn to sing, so I invite you to stand and sing with our next hymn, the first Noel.
may be seated. If you think of people who have, had, who have changed the world, you can think of ancient times, think of Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan, Caesar. You think of people in modern times that have changed the world. You think of people like Lincoln, Roosevelt, Churchill. And what is it that these fellows had? What did uh, the people, when we think of the people who changed the world, what we tend to think of them having is a large military force, government support, funding, right? They have the power to tell people what to do. That is what we think of as take what it takes to change the world. People who can tell others what to do. We gather tonight because of the birth of someone that changed and continues to change the world, but his birth had none of the trappings of this power, and nor will his life. At his birth, instead of an army, there is one angel that announces his coming to Mary, then to Joseph. Instead of a government with, with its support, funding, structure, and influence, there are a few shepherds. Instead of well-rehearsed speeches, there is a screaming newborn, an exhausted mother, and a frazzled father. Probably not a lot being said. Why is there such a difference? All the men who have, people have changed the world, why is this so different from them? Well, it turns out that the ability to tell people what to do and to force them that military might and government force only gets you so far. And anyone who's been a parent knows this. Because you can spank your child to make them stop, but can you spank your child to make them love? Nope. Doesn't work. Right? I can force you to stop hitting someone. I cannot make you love them. You can force someone to not discriminate, but you can't stop them from hating. Not misbehaving, not hitting, not discriminating, not discriminating. It's a good start, but that's all it is, really. It's a start. And to us, a child is, a, is born, and that child will lead us far beyond merely not misbehaving, not hitting, not discriminating. He comes to lead us to something far greater, but he will never force us to do it. He will invite us. He will inspire us to live differently. He will pave the way for us to join him in the kingdom that he will proclaim. A child is born and he will change the world not by force, but by invitation, by forgiveness, by service. The other thing about a child being born and the way that God works seeming to line up is something about the nature of how fast a child grows up. How long does it take for a child to grow up? What do you think? I heard a never out there. Give me some hope. <laughs> Decade, 18 years, 20 years, it happens eventually, right? It seems to take a while, and yet goes a lot faster than seems possible, doesn't it? Facebook tends to remind me pictures on a regular basis. Four years ago today, and I look at that picture and think, wait a minute. That was four years ago? That, that doesn't seem to be possible. They grew so fast. This child changes the world by changing lives one at a time, and it happens in the same way. Our lives change as we choose to follow the invitation to follow Jesus. And following Jesus is much like raising a child. It takes time, and day by day, it might not seem like we're getting anywhere to learn to be graceful, patient, and humble. Yet that time sure does seem to fly and you look back, right? In the same way that it seemed to be only the blink of, of an eye that Sophia was learning to walk and now she's walking to school, it uh, is in the blink of an eye that I look back and I think, when did that happen? I can distinctly remember the feel of the couches as I was sitting on, uh, up at Truman, 20-year-old Andy, wondering, am I ever gonna get done reading through the Bible? Am I gonna ever make sense of this? This is hard. This is complicated. Like, that doesn't, that seems like two or three weeks ago. And now here I am. What happened? Right? Well, follow Jesus. And day by day, things do change. They will. Just like a child growing up. 
The child is born, and with that child, something new begins, and we each here are invited to follow him. Never forced, always invited. And as we follow him, our lives will change profoundly in ways that are almost impossible to see day by day. But when looking back and seeing how much our lives have changed, we can see in ourselves and each other that following Jesus as Lord does bring us to a new, a better, a holy, a fulfilling way of life. That is the gift of Christmas that we receive this night. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand and join me with, as we confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creeds. Please stand and join with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this, he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Except for Tim. Can you turn off a light for me? Turn off those lights. Thank you. We're going to start getting ready for communion, and the invitation to this table is the same invitation that happens every time. This is an open table. All, who are, wel all are welcome to this table who love Jesus, and you're here, I'll take that as an act of love, who repent of their sin and seek to live at peace with one another. And so we're going to come to this moment where we confess how we have fallen short, repent of their sin, and then we're going to celebrate and create some peace amongst us. No, nothing too formal for the confession. I just want you to ponder for a moment with me. I'm a pastor, and yet, if truth be told, I'm not the pastor this church deserves. It deserves better than I can offer. Right? I, I'm a father, and my children deserve more than, than I give. I'm a husband. I'm a son. If you think of all the ways, all the roles that I play, and if I spend any time looking at them, I, would, I realize that I do fall short of what I could be, what I'm called to be. I think that's a common realization, isn't it? We all fall short. Here's the, here are the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Um, now as for forgiving and peacemaking people, and on a night that we are gathered with family, I invite you to stand up and make some peace. Celebrate peace. Hug on each other. Kiss if you're related. Handshakes. Let us be at peace with one another. Peace off.
We are taking up one for one last time the, the offering. It's not the offering as is usual done in church. It's a bit different. What we have been doing this this month uh, as we prepare for Christmas, as we prepare to exchange the gifts that we give to each other, to our family and friends and loved ones, we are I had the opportunity to give a gift to those who are in need. Uh, and what we've been looking at are those who need water. There are uh, mothers tonight who cannot give their children clean water and it risks their lives. And so for 50 bucks it buys a water filter the size of your hand that for 10 years will give a family clean water. It is my invitation one last time if you have not already uh, done so and if you'd like to. Um, anything that goes in here will be a gift to a family in need. You're welcome to come forward and give a gift either as you come forward for communion or, or after worship. So uh, one last time, thank you for your response to this thus far uh, this month. So we come to communion and uh, communion has a tendency to get very somber and serious. Let me ask a question. When's the last time you put 12, 13, 14 guys around a table with really good food and wine? They had to drink wine. Part of the Passover feast is you drink four cups of wine. How many cups are in a bo one bottle of wine? Four, right? You have to have a bottle of wine per person if you're going to do Passover right. Right? And so, by the time that you have told the Passover story of the joyous moment in which God leads the Hebrew people from slavery, uh, Jesus doesn't say, okay guys, it's time to get serious. He's telling a joy, they're telling a joyous story, and in the middle of that joy, he tells them another joyous piece of news. This is my body, it is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. An act of love for you. Right? And then Jesus takes the cup, in case you wanted to know, it's cup three of the four that you drink at a Passover. And he raises the cup, and he blesses it, and he gives it to his disciples. And he says, take and drink all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you eat this meal in remembrance of me. This is a meal that is reverential, and it is important, and it is serious, but it is also a real joy here. Right? You come to this meal, and we're celebrating the joy of new possibilities and, and new hopes. And, and, you know, things get complicated. You, you think about the first family meal after you have the, when a, a child is born, and things get off kilter because you're not used to dealing with an extra small child, but there's still a real joy there. And I'd like to invite you to come and partake of this meal in that same joyous fashion. This is, this is wonderful that we get to take this meal together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this gift. We pray that you'd send your spirit upon this bread and upon this cup, that it might be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who joyously proclaims to his disciples that there is hope, there are new possibilities, there is a future, there is forgiveness. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will those who are going to help serve communion please come forward? which is a fancy word for I hand you a piece of bread and then you dip it in the cup. That way we share a common loaf and a common cup. And then come forward to the side you're on and then come around to the side when you're done. So you all go over there, go out, and you all come down here. Come on down.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you have, you have given yourself to us. Grant that we might now go into the world, into this night, to give ourselves for others. Amen. Come to a time when we're going to light some candles. What's going to happen is I'm going to walk down the aisle with my lit candle, and on the aisles you will turn your candle and lit, light off mine. Whoever has the lit candle, you keep that one straight so we don't drip wax over everywhere. Um, I'll say a few words once we all have all, can have all of our candles lit, and we'll sing Silent Night. When do you light candles? Or Scentsy, which seems to be the modern equivalent. <laughs> Valentine's Day? Birthdays? Someone important, someone you, you love is coming over, you light a candle in their room. It's the way that we mark that someone is coming that we care about deeply. That someone's going to show up and we want to mark that, that moment. It is fitting that we mark this moment by the lighting of candles, not just because it is in the middle of the night that this all happens, but we want to mark the moment that Christ is born, that someone of great importance has come to be with us. So we light a candle to give thanks that Christ is born, that Christ is with us. It's a one more way that we give thanks to God for this gift. Please join me as we sing together.
We're going to go forth in a minute. It's going to be busy and a lot of tissue paper is going to go flying tomorrow. So it's a good thing just to take a moment right now. Because this is good. This is really good. I'm very thankful you've come to share this moment with us tonight. Go forth and may your Christmas be merry. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.